Let's see if we can bring these to life. Hi, welcome back to the shed. I got a parcel this week that contained two Game Boys, an original grey Game Boy DMG and an NES edition GBA SP. Both have been lying around for a long, long time and the person who sent them to me didn't know if they would still be working or not. I haven't tested them yet, but that's what I'm going to do in this video. This old DMG Game Boy and this Game Boy Advance SP and there's the Metroid 2 game cartridge, which I'm also really excited about. We'll start with the DMG get that up and running and then move on to the Game Boy Advance after that. Well, first of all, it's actually, it's a little bit mucky, needs a little bit of a clean up, but on the most part, it's really good condition. There's no scratches on it. The lens looks in pretty good shape. There's not really any yellowing either, but I'm waffling. Let's take a look and see if we can get it working. So let's see if we get power in the first place. Okay, that's a good start. And if we got sound. Okay, so. What we've got going on here is it works, it powers up, there is sound. Um, however, there's a lot of dead pixels on the left and the right. Uh, so I'm gonna warm up my soldering iron in anticipation and we'll do a repair on that and get that up and running. While it's open, because I'll need to open it up to get at the screen, we'll clean the back of the lens as well and get rid of any little dust particles. Right, other thing to check is does it work and does it run games? So I'll start with a cartridge that I know works. Let's see if we can get Tetris coming on. So the Nintendo logo works, which is normally an indication that the game will be fine. If there's any issues with reading the cartridge, usually the Nintendo logo is a little bit garbled. There we go. All directions work, A button, B button work. Start and select, should be all fine there. Okay, now I'm not gonna distract myself and start playing because we need to do these repairs. Secondly though, before we open it, let's see if the now, this is a good sign. When it came to me, and it, you know, I was told that it had been sat there for a long time, it had the cartridge sitting in there. Now, seeing as it booted up Tetris the first time, that indicates this cartridge has probably been in it for a long time, preventing any dust or dirt getting at the contacts of either the Game Boy or the cartridge. Let's test that theory. Got a clear Nintendo logo. And the familiar sounds. There we go. So that is working right so we'll just open this up so where's my tray got my dmg tray so this tray is for organizing my game boy screws so i've got little spaces in there for all the separate ones i've got six tri-wing screwdrivers to get the most part out and then all the crosshead ones on the inside so i'll keep that handy when i'm taking it apart so they're separate i'll carefully take the ribbon out to separate those two and the front is the bit that we want to do a bit of maintenance on the back so i'm actually going to put the batteries back in now if we get this working again i'll need to clean up the shelf but one step at a time this will be stuck in with some quite old adhesive so i need to be careful in terms of getting it out, just lever it up slightly. Wait for that adhesive to go. I can feel it pop in there now. There we go. You will have heard it. So that's lifted out. So here is my front PCB. Looks all in really good shape. I'll just pop this to one side. As I said before, there's little specks of dust and things inside, so I'll get those cleaned out in a little while. Buttons can come out because we can clean around all those. There's a little bit of uh, dirt build up on those usually. So let's just put my front shell somewhere safe and reconnect the ribbon. With that back in, this should still work. Obviously we can't play because we can't access the controls, but it will work enough to see the screen. So I'll turn the contrast dial right down so I can see all the dark color. And you can hopefully see there, I've got a whole blank space down this side and down this side as well with a couple of additional lines and what i want to do is get that whole area solid first thing i'm going to have to do is remove this black rubber strip from below now the rubber strip has like a strip of double-sided tape below it 
So I'll have to carefully just lift the end of that and then peel it off and that has left the double sided tape. Now I've seen this done before where people try and fix the pixels without taking off the tape and just heat up the tape and that's that's no good you need to heat up the LCD so I'll carefully try and peel that back use tweezers just to lift up the first part and then once there's a fair bit left peel the whole lot back now if you're lucky you can keep that and reuse it afterwards to stick it back in place. Now I've exposed this whole bottom bit. So at the moment we've got all these dead pixels either side. There's quite a lot. This is a brilliant example for doing this with. And all you need is a soldering iron. Just brush off any dust or bits. That's looking better already. There's not a mark on this so the lens has never been off before. Now with this, you may have seen videos before, and what happens is you heat this area at the bottom where the LCD is glued, and it reconnects the liquid crystal display and brings back those pixels. But rather than just start here, there, or anywhere, it's best to start from the area where it works and work your way outwards, and you just have the iron in line and just move it along. Don't leave it in contact for too long because you don't want to melt or burn anything. Um, but not enough time is going to also bring its problems too. So it's resting just on this flat area just below the LCD. Nothing's happening at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll start from a little further in. Because unless they are starting to do something. And sometimes it will undo the gap. And that's okay. Because you've got to work your way out. Some of these are a little bit stubborn. So if I'm working over on the left here. And there's a line over here that still hasn't been fixed that's no good you've got to make sure you work outwards eventually to the side sometimes it'll overheat a little bit and you need to give it time to calm down this seems like it's all going to come back to life it's flickering a little bit so i'm going to let that cool while i move on to this side and start heating these again if nothing's happening move further back work your way out again just be patient with it. Keep it moving all the time. You don't want the tip of the iron to just sit there and end up melting the ribbon. This is a good example. It is quite stubborn. If it's being really awkward, you can move a little further down. Try not to move too close to the LCD itself. Get in there. It is getting there. There we go. Now over here we've got one line that's just a little bit faint, which means I do still need to keep working on it. bit flickery which suggests it's going to end up causing us problems for a while so the indicator of that is normally I wouldn't hover over that area for ages go back further in and work out this is where a lot of people slip up don't realize that it's, it's the entire connection not just the connection near that line that you need to investigate now I've gone further back now it started to work a bit better Still a little bit flickery and give it time to cool. What you can do is keep the pressure on it. Um, I've not found that always works, but I'll show you what I mean anyway. So you get like a flathead screwdriver like this and you can put that on just to keep the pressure down. Heat it, move the soldering iron so it works. And then as it cools, keep the pressure on with the screwdriver. You may notice that the other end, a little line has just appeared. So as that cooled, that came away. But to be honest, there were so many deadlines of pixels at the beginning that that's not a problem. I should probably leave that screwdriver there for longer, but not to worry. Now, although it fixed itself, I'm gonna go back and investigate this one, do the same thing, reheat it, put the screwdriver on to keep the pressure on and just let that cool. And that looks like it should be alright. 
Now obviously this has happened while I've warmed it up and it is now warm and the LCD is absolutely fine all the way up to the edges. However, over time as it cools, it might go bad again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the shell while I'm waiting for this to all settle and then put it all back together. Fix the LCD, but I want to let that cool and test it again afterwards. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to clean up the shell. This barcode is a little bit warm, torn, and marked, and everything else looked a bit tatty. So although I was deliberating about keeping it on, uh, I tested at the edges, and it seems like it's going to peel off okay. It's slightly discolored, um, but it should be okay. Um, same with this, it's, it's peeled over at that side. It looks quite untidy, so I'm going to take that off as well and see if I can get that sorted. be a bit like sacrilege to some people but not to worry um, so it is it's got like the original shade of grey underneath where the stickers were but it's not too bad I think it should clean up okay um, I'll give it a quick go with let's see if I've got any baby wipes baby wipes are brilliant for cleaning up old plastic um, alcohol does the job well but alcohol can sometimes damage the surface and if you're precious about things, you don't want to cause any damage to them. And nobody's more precious about anything than they are about babies. So if these are wipes that you would happily put near a baby, then you know your old plastic handheld console is going to be safe. I tend to just rub all over the place and then get a toothbrush just into all the gaps. Sometimes even the combination of the two, put the wipe over it, rub the toothbrush in that way. That looks pretty good actually. Not, not as discoloured as I feared it might be. That's clean. And now for the shell itself. I don't need to even take the whole thing apart. I thought I might, um, but inside it's pretty clean. Just a paintbrush into the gaps should do fine. And then these surfaces to clean up. Okay, so that's the back. All done. Looks nice. And the front. Right. Now, looking at the front, and this will be how the dust got in. If I put a little bit of pressure on the back, you'll see it lifts away. So I've got two choices. I could replace it with like a glass one or something like that. Or I can pop this carefully off and put like a a little strip of double-sided tape just on the inside top there just to hold it in place that should do fine that's probably my safest bet for keeping it as original as possible but will this remove without any damage seems okay it's not too dried out now, to make sure I get a neat fit, let's just see. That sits quite well there. I think what I'll do is keep that to one side, clean up the shell. I don't need to worry about these bumps. Normally I'd clean these off, but they will fit perfectly in the gaps on the back of this, seeing as I'm using the original lens. So we're okay there. Uh, and I'm going to put some double sided tape down the sides here, here, and here just to keep everything in place. I think that'll work fine. This will allow me to get into the gaps around the edge of the screen and clean that up. Okay, that looks all right. 
couple of slight dings, but most of the marks and dirt have come out. Our oh, buttons, silicon parts just usually need a bit of a massage. All the dirt comes off those easily. Incidentally, there's so many broken, damaged Game Boys out there that all these awesome backlit screen options are so cool. But try and find a broken one to do it on. If you find something like this one I've got here, it is worth attempting to bring it back to its original state. Because with modding <laughs> being popular, and I'm no one to talk because I've modded hundreds of Game Boys, but with modding being so popular, there's a finite number of these, so although there's millions of them all over the world, there's gradually fewer as we go. So if you can get one that's almost original like this, I think it's fine to try and restore it and keep that nostalgia original, because the more get modded, there's loads out there, and it's great because it's all these being brought back to life. However, there'll be fewer and fewer of the ones in the original state. And um, if you're old like me and you grew up with the original non-backlit LCD version, it's both a revelation getting to play it on a really fancy, nice backlit IPS screen or whatever else. But in reality, if you want it to feel like it did, oh God, how long ago was it now? 1989 so like 30 years ago or however long it is um, yeah the originals kind of cool it's definitely got its own nostalgic charm if a little less useful and functional than the new modern twists so that's those cleaned up good way of cleaning up the buttons because they're a bit fiddly is to just put the wipe down and just rub the buttons on it Sides. Sides are normally the muckiest bit. This is not too bad actually. And then just dry them off <laughs> with this Angry Birds cloth that seems to have become my standard <laughs> microfiber cloth at the moment. Very classy. It's just what seems to be hanging around, but it keeps hanging around and it's always to hand, so yeah, Angry Birds. Don't think there was ever an Angry Birds Game Boy game. Right, so is that clean enough? I think the rest is just marks from where. So that should all be okay. So it's time to start getting that back together. Just clean up this surface. And one of the things you've got to watch out for is, remember when I took that off the LCD before? Always forget about that when I'm putting it back together. So we will watch out for that. Um, Okay, so back shell all cleaned up. We'll just put the batteries back in for now for testing purposes because before I put the front together again, I want to just see how that LCD has settled because it might need another go over with the soldering iron. No, that's fine. I'll turn it off and on again. Yeah, there's not a single hint of a line there. So that's all good. The contrast dial's working okay. And there was, I don't think there was any sound. Let's try that again, just to be sure. Yeah, we're fine. Right, okay. It's time to put it back together. Well, it's now raining outside and a dog has started barking, but other than that, <laughs> things are going quite well. Um, we'll just take that front out. The back is all together, no problems there. I'll just have to take out these two batteries to make room for the screws afterwards. And in terms of putting the front together, I'm not going to put the lens on until afterwards. I'll do that last. Raise this up while I'm putting it back together.
So I'll put a pencil under it there, which just means that when I drop the buttons and things in place, they're not going to move. And this is the stage where you forget to put the rubber strip back on your front. Told you. <laughs> so luckily I've remembered, uh, tweezers can come in handy. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It can roll up on itself a little bit, so just be careful unrolling it. I mean, you could use new tape but well, this is the perfect size and it's still sticky, so who am I to argue? I've got my tweezers handy just in case I need them, but it seems to be going on alright. Just point it in the right direction. Stick it down. There we go, that's alright. Get the rubber strip and put that on top. Doesn't matter which way up the rubber strip goes. Try and centralise it though, that one wasn't very well centred. Just butts up against the bottom, holds that in place. Now if you forget that, it's not the end of the world, but that does keep a little bit of pressure on when it's together, which makes it less likely for those lines to come back. So that's all in place now. Line up the speaker, because that's got a little tab, and then the board can go in over the top. A little bit of pressure just to stick it back down. So left the sticky bit on the inside, and now I'll start to get my screws in. So I mentioned before about the tape, I've got this thin double sided tape, I've had it a while so hopefully it's still sticking. Peel off the top layer of it. tweezers, that didn't work. So that's ready and I don't think I've got anything on the screen. Right, let's take a look at the inside of this screen. have our first success. Um, I suppose it's only right to fire it up with the Metroid cartridge that came with it. The contrast obviously is right down so that's like illegible there but you turn it up. I mean it is quite a dark screen on Metroid 2. But there we go that's all all right. There are, let's try and get my light at the right angle there. There's no dead pixels on that screen so this Game Boy is not a million miles away from where it was 30 years ago. Oh, do you know what? I still get tingles. <laughs> and it's not because I've wired it up badly. I just get that nostalgic. You just I mean, I do Game Boys all the time, and it's funny, I've been doing Game Boys for years on these mods and things, so I shouldn't get that excited about holding one, but I still love it. Love it. Right. Okay, so now for the Game Boy Advance SP. Now on first glance it looks alright, I mean close up it's kind of scratched on the surface and a lot of the paintwork's come off. Um, but it's not too bad. On the back the sticker has been removed and so has the battery cover. Uh, and on the inside, the inside looks pretty good. It's the wrong colour, but it's a battery cover and it's got the screw in it 
and it kind of <laughs> matches the top, just not necessarily the bottom, but it'll add to the whole hodgepodge nature of it. The other thing is, I found a couple of batteries, um, whether they work or not, I don't know. Whether they'll even charge or not, I don't know. So let's just have a quick go. See, I don't even know if the Game Boy itself works. See, nothing there. And with that one, I mean, I expect both of these probably won't work. Oh, well, there we go. So we've got some life. And I assume we had some sound there. Now this is a front lit Game Boy, so it's not super bright. If I turn off my light there, you'll see it does work. Oh hey, okay, well that's not too bad. So we'll switch that off, get my lamp back on so you can see what I'm doing. And all I am going to do with this is give it a clean up. <laughs> put my silver battery cover on and put it on charge. So the back is a bit grubby in particular. Now, where you've got your kind of sticky residue, one of the good things for cleaning that up, if I can find it, a dry microfiber cloth is quite good and you just kind of drag it and it'll usually take off any sticky residue. It depends on how long it's been there, I suppose. I'll try cleaning it up first. Baby wipes. That's cool. The um, film's never been peeled off the logo. So the logo's actually pretty mean. Good. I've got this stuff, sticky stuff remover, which is perfect for what I need in this case. Just a bit of it on top of there. Now, tilt it in the right direction. Add it to my baby wipe and hopefully that will get this off in a jiffy. One thing I've not tried is a game. So that's that. surprised by just how bright that isn't. So as you can see it's very difficult to see the screen but it does work. However it's another success it works. Aside from <laughs> this and the lack of sticker it's a functional pretty cool looking Game Boy which has come from something that we didn't know it would work at all to just needing a new battery and a battery cover and a bit of a cleanup. So yeah, I'll call that a success. Well, I'm quite happy with that. Two separate kinds of projects. First of all, being able to bring something back to its original condition, especially when it's something I love so much, like the original Game Boy is so satisfying. I'm not gonna do any further mods to this. I'm gonna keep it completely original uh, along with the screen and everything else. I think it's absolutely gorgeous machine and uh, just, absolutely full of nostalgia i think if you find good examples of these it's worth keeping them good as i always say use broken ones for doing the mods because then you bring in something new from something that wasn't going to be used again this can be used again and again and this will be treasured in terms of something that replicates that original experience but with the other one um yeah we got that working too we <laughs> you know it's a reminder of just how the original front lit SP screen isn't that great so I might replace that although I haven't re replaced the original uh, battery cover I think the silver goes quite well I don't generally like having a contrasting color for a battery cover but in terms of just having a rummage in a box and finding something that does the job that'll do me fine so starting this video we were definitely going into the unknown I had no idea if these two were going to work at all let alone that I'd end up with both of them working fully so yeah I'm really happy with that uh, don't know what I've got planned next, quite a few projects in mind, so do keep an eye out for more videos. If you want to see more, do subscribe. Um, there's some sort of bell you can click to get notifications. I don't know, just keep an eye on my channel. I will have more videos coming soon. Um, in the meantime, I hope you liked that one, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>